Hi, kids. Today, we will learn various means of seed dispersal. So let's start. Kids, we learned that pollination is a process by which pollens are transferred from the anther, that is, the male part of the flower, to the stigma, which is the female part of the flower, and thereby enabling fertilization and reproduction. Now let's see how pollination occurs or how pollens reach stigma. There are several ways by which pollens can reach stigma of carpel. It can be through insects, bees, animals, birds, wind, or even water. The process by which pollens, after reaching the stigma of pistil, reaches the ovules present in ovary is called fertilization, which leads to the formation of seeds. And these seeds are sown in mud to grow new plants. In our garden, we sow seeds of different plants to grow non-flowering plants, flowering plants, and fruit trees. When a seed is sown, it requires enough sunlight, mineral, salts, water, space, and air to grow into a new plant. If many seeds are sown at the same place or close to each other, there would be a tough competition among seeds for necessities. That is, soil, water, space, mineral, salt, and sunlight. And the strongest or fittest seeds win the fight for survival or the fittest seeds would grow. Examples? Many seeds fall from the trees and there begins a competition among the seeds and even between seeds and the parent tree for soil, water, space, mineral salts, and sunlight. So, plants need to produce a large number of seeds, as all seeds will grow into new plants. Only a few ones will grow into new plants. Some seeds are eaten away by birds or animals. Some are destroyed by wind or rain. Some seeds are even eaten by human beings. So seeds need to spread as far as possible from the parent tree or plant and also at places where there's enough space for the seed to germinate or grow. And this process of spreading seeds away from the parent plant is called seed dispersal. Tootway has thousands of animated videos on math, English, and science to clear the core basics of these subjects. There are many means of seed dispersal. Let's learn about them. Wind. Some plants have very small and lightweight seeds. Such seeds are spread or dispersed by wind. Small and light seeds fly away with wind to distant places. Seeds can float on the breeze or alternatively, they can flutter to the ground. The classic examples of these dispersal mechanisms include dandelions, which have feathery pappas attached to their seeds so they can disperse to very long distances. Maples which have wing seeds, flutter to the ground. An important constraint in case of wind dispersal is that a lot of seeds must be produced by the plant, as likelihood of a seed landing in a site suitable for germination is very less. Water. Many aquatic and some terrestrial plants use seed dispersal through water. Seeds can travel for extremely long distances depending on the specific mode of water dispersal. 
The water lily is an example of such a plant. Water lilies' flowers make a fruit that floats in the water for a while and then drops down to the bottom to take root on the floor of the pond. The seeds of the palm trees can also be dispersed by water. If they grow near oceans, the seeds can be transported by ocean currents over long distances, allowing the seeds to be dispersed as far as other continents. Mangrove trees live right in the water. Their seeds fall from the tree and grow roots as soon as they touch any kind of soil. During low tide, they might fall in soil instead of water and start growing right where they fell. If the water level is high, however, they can be carried far away from where they fell and the mangrove trees often make little islands as dirt and other things collect in their roots, making little bodies of land. Animals can disperse plant seeds in several ways. Seeds may get attached to animal fur. Birds and animals can consume seeds which are dispersed by means of waste removed from their body. Birds and mammals are the most important seed dispersers, but a wide variety of other animals, including turtles and fish, also can transport seeds. Ants. Ants carry seeds into their colonies and feed on some of them and leave some seeds in an underground chamber. And there they can germinate into new plants. So there is a relationship between animals and plants. Plants provide food to animals and animals help disperse the seeds of plants to distant and different locations and help them grow into new plants. Many rodents, such as squirrels and rats, may also disperse seeds by hoarding the seeds in their hidden holes, which remain well protected from other seed predators, and some are left uneaten and grow into new plants. Humans may disperse seeds by various means, like seeds may get attached to human clothes, shoes, and vehicles and get transported to distant locations. In some plants, seeds are spread by popping open their fruits suddenly. When they are ripe, that is, fruits explode suddenly when they are ripe. And this explosion spreads the seeds away from the parent plant to distant locations. Examples? Peas. The pea suddenly splits open violently and makes the seeds fly out of the pod in all directions. So kids, today we learn a lot about how plants disperse or spread their seeds to distant locations in order to grow new plants and how animals and plants depend on each other and how water and wind too helps plants disperse their seeds. Now go ahead and take a quiz to learn more. Bye-bye!